I'm on the road 300 days a year, every week a different city. My travels take me from Silicon Valley to Shanghai, from Oslo to Istanbul and a thousand places in between. I interview scientists and inventors, CEOs and entrepreneurs. I guess you could say I'm an explorer. But of everything I see, what fascinates me the most is why some people and some companies manage to stay one step ahead of everyone else. What is it that they see that the rest of us miss? There's so much more to being a futurist than being the first to uncover trends and make predictions. For me, the most important thing is understanding the complex and evolving relationship between humans and technology. I mean, imagine if everyone in your enterprise was able to realize their true potential, unleashing a wave of creativity, productivity, and profitability. That is the real promise of the future. After my keynotes, audiences are inspired, motivated, and challenged. They're less fearful about what's coming next than excited about what might be possible. When I ask people why, they say it's because I lead with stories, not statistics. I share frameworks, not just facts. And I empower them with questions, not just answers. So what I try and do is leave the audience with three things. Number one, a completely different way of looking at the issues that are facing them. Two, a concrete set of next actions they can immediately start on. And number three, mind grenades, which is what I call really big questions that people can use to challenge themselves and others. Great ideas can come from everywhere. And when you travel as much as I do now, the boundaries between places start to blur. Countries start to appear just like suburbs in one giant interconnected global city. And you begin to see the world in an entirely new way. The future is everywhere. You just need to know where to look. So after a decade of working with some of the world's greatest companies and brands, I've come to realize that the essential ingredient for innovation and transformation isn't technology at all but in fact is what lies right here, our imagination. That's why what happens tomorrow should not be our concern. The real question is, what shall we do today?